G'day, welcome to another curriculum burst. Let's try this curious geometry problem. It goes as follows. Let T1 be a triangle with sides 2011, 2012, 2013. All right, so you can do that. Triangle, big sides, 2011, 2012, 2013. They're calling that T1. All right, for n greater than or equal to 1, if Tn is triangle ABC and DEF are the points of tangency of the inner circle of triangle ABC to the size AB, BC, and AC respectively, I'm getting lost, um, then Tn plus 1 is the triangle with sides of lengths AD, BE, and CF, if it exists. Oh heavens, oh heavens, that was, that was a long, long sentence. So what's it saying? Um, we've got a triangle, we've got a first triangle, and then this is saying if I've got one triangle, they're calling it ABC, so I'll also draw a picture of it, um, and D, E, and F are the points of tangency of the in circle of triangle ABC. In circle, the inside circle. That must mean the circle that's inside the triangle that probably just touches everything. All right, points of tangency. So D, E, and F are these three points. Uh, goes on and on. Uh, to the triangle ABC, to the sides AB, BC, and AC respectively. To the sides AB, that must be D, B, C, E, F. All right, so all that's just saying, we've got one triangle, draw a circle in the middle and get this uh, next set of three points. Then what? Then Tn plus 1, the next triangle, is the triangle with sides AD. Oh, this is getting confusing. AD is that part. Uh, BE, that part. And then CF is this part. Ooh. Ooh, this is curious. Uh, all right. So apparently, you've got one triangle, draw that inside circle, and then take these three parts and use those for your next triangle. Okay, I haven't actually read what the question is yet. What's the question? What is the perimeter of the last triangle in the sequence of these TNs? Oh my goodness, okay, all right. Well, I have no idea what to do. I have no idea what to do. This is very strange. Um, well, strategy number two comes to mind, which is just do something. Um, we've got a first triangle. I might as well just do this to that first triangle and get T2, so that's T1. Let's get T2 from this. Um, but I'll just use this picture. Uh, I'll call that length A, I'll call that length B, and length C. And I know all of that is what, 2002, all that's 2013, sorry, 2012, 2013, and all that's 2011. Can I actually work out what the next three side lengths are? Hmm. All right, okay. Uh, I'm staring at this, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, Though I can't help but notice from geometry, the two tangents theorem, that two little tangent segments coming from a common point must be the same length, that must, length, that must be B as well, uh, A, that must be A as well, and this must be uh, C and C. All right, so two tangents theorems everywhere. So I know, okay, so I know that A plus B is 2012, C plus B is this, bingo. I bet I can actually work out formulas for A, B, and C. I feel like I've got some equations going on. All right. Um, well, well, okay, let me be a little sophisticated here. Because uh, I can't help but notice that these numbers are basically the same. They're all basically 2012, just one less and one more. So 2012, 2012 plus one more, 2012 plus one less. So the perimeter is actually three 2012s. So I actually see A plus B plus B plus C plus C plus A. So two A's plus two B's plus two C's is three 2012s. Trying to avoid some work here. I don't actually add up these three numbers. I'll leave it like that for the moment. And we did say that B plus C, we know what B plus C is, that's 2013. 2A plus 2 2013s is 3 2012s. Okay, now what? Um, well, let's divide everything by 2. A plus 2013 is what? 1.5 2012s. Trying to avoid actual arithmetic if I can help it. Uh, let's subtract. A is three halves of 2012. Take away a 2012, take away a one. <laughs> a is one half of 2012, take away a one. All right, there's an actual number for A. I suppose I could work it out. Uh, can I do the same sort of thing to get B and C? Uh, what I did here was I focused on A and worked out that part. Let's focus on B. 2B is. Uh, Three 2012s, being a little quicker now, uh, take away 2A and 2C. 
A and C, A plus C is at 2011, so take away two 2011s. This divided by two, B is one and a half 2012s, take away 2011. Okay, that's take away 2011 plus one, so B is actually half of 2012 plus one. That's really nice. I could do it again. Uh, let's do C. Uh, 2C is three 2012s, take away 2A plus B. A plus B is two, let's take away two 2012s. C is uh, one half of 2012 on the nose. Ah, I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling good about this. Basically, we started with one number X, a number X plus one, a number X minus one. We found what the next triangle has to be, and it's really, uh, all right, let's do it here. The next triangle is half of x uh, plus one, and half of x, and half of x minus one. I bet the next triangle is to be half of x over two, x quarter, and x quarter plus one, and x quarter minus one. And I bet the next triangle, so on, bingo. I think I know what the triangle is going to be from one iteration to the next. Uh, what's the question? Uh, what is the perimeter of the last triangle in the sequence? The last one? Looks like this goes on forever. All right, here's a question. What stops a set of numbers from being a triangle? Well, obviously I can't just do any set of numbers. Like if I did the number 10 and the number 6 and the number 3, there's no way an edge of 6 and an edge of 3 reach across 10. So I guess I need the triangle inequality. I want the two small sides for certain to be bigger than the long side. Uh, that's going to be the big side. I want the sum of these two to be bigger than that. That gives me a condition on x. I bet, aha, uh -huh, I feel like there's now hope with this question. I've got a sense of what the side length is going to be from one iteration to the next. All I need to do is check when do I have the two short sides failing to be bigger than the long side. That would be the value of x I'm interested in, which would then give me the perimeter of the last triangle that exists. Doable. This feels doable. This is great. I started this question having no clue what to do and it seems to have fallen into place. Now I'm not saying the work isn't ahead of us still, I've actually got to do this work, but now it feels like it's going to be a joy. I've got a path, I can do it. So try it out for yourself. Get an actual answer. And then we've got an actual answer compared to the answer that's in the essay that goes in this video. Be good to compare notes on this one. All right, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.